I'm going to do a little bit, uh, something a little bit different today. And we're going to tell a little story, a little parody on uh, quantum mechanics and general relativity. And I think it's appropriate for uh, what these folks have done for the last 100 years. Here you have people who have degrees, PhD degrees. You know, they, they've been at the university for 10 years at least. They are professionals now. And they believe some of the explanations, the ridiculous explanations that have been passed on from decade to decade to the people who are graduates today that are out there doing so-called physics. What they do is mathematical physics followed by the most irrational physical interpretations that you can imagine. And it's incredible that after 2,000 years, or more, right? This is what we ended up with. Uh, this is what they uh, learn. This is what they preach. This is what they believe in. And this is what the world uh, also believes because they take it on the basis of authority. Anyways, we're going to get on uh, with our story. And uh, it's a little corny story. And again, it's maybe appropriate for uh, the topics that we're going to be dealing with, which is quantum mechanics and general relativity. Okay, so here's uh, the name of the story. It's Gullible's Travel. Once upon a time, in a far, far away land, a hunter found a babe in the woods, an innocent babe in a basket. Having little alternative, the hunter took the abandoned basket to his log cabin and gave the babe in the woods the name of Johnny. Johnny grew up. He would run around, uh, and the townsfolk got to know him very well. Johnny was quite popular, but for the wrong reasons. The villagers eventually came to realize that Johnny was as candid as they come, and that he would forever be a babe in the woods. So naive was he that you could sell him the Empire State Building. Twice. Johnny was so innocent and simple-minded that he believed everything uh, anyone told him. He never challenged even the most absurd stories, especially if they came from what he believed to be authoritative individuals. Eventually, everyone in town took him for the village idiot and smirked behind his back because of his irrational ways of thinking and ridiculous beliefs. The entire scenario was even funnier because Johnny mistakenly thought that they were actually amused by his fantastic ideas. At some point, the townsfolk began to call him Gullible, a name he was mighty proud of, and the name stuck. Now, Gullible, as he highly was, was curious about the small world of atoms and wondered about the big world of stars and galaxies. He wanted to know how the universe works and why it works the way it does. It was then that he decided it was time to travel. He would venture to faraway lands and talk with leading university scholars to learn more about Mother Nature's world. So off he went, seeking his holy grail on a personal journey of enlightenment. One day, Gullible came across a widely traveled man who was selling intelligent potions. The sick peddler took a single look at Gullible and sized him up at once. Adams? Yeah, laddie, why don't you go down to the land of Lilliput, a world where tiny people with very small minds have already figured out the invisible realm of particles. But if you do, you would do well to take this wondrous potion. It'll make you smarter. Gullible thought that both were great ideas. In fact, idea odds, or as friendly traveling man said under his breath when he bid him goodbye, idiot. So off went Gullible to the quantum land of Lilliput, a land of atoms and electrons. 
taking with him all the intelligence that he could muster, as well as all the flasks of Kool-Aid the used car salesman managed to unload onto him. The sentinel in Lilliput saw Gullible approach and yelled, Who goes there? I'm Gullible. Yeah, you look the part too. Thank you, sir. So what's your business, Gullible? I came to learn about Adams. No, oh, brother. That's another one that bites the dust. You didn't by any chance uh, see a scumbag selling potions on the way down here, did you? Oh, yes. In fact, this friendly man directed me to your quantum world. That figures. Sure. Why not, Gullible? Go ahead. Just make sure you bring your head back with you. So Gullible went straight to see the wisest sage in the tiny ant world of Adams, a renowned scholar named Stevie Hawk. Hello, Dr. Stevie Hawk. They told me you're the science guru, the man who knows everything about atoms. Hawk rolled his eyes. They come dumber every day. It's that snake oil peddler who sold us all those intelligence potions who sends them. Yeah, sure, Gullible. I'm the man. Step right into my lab and I'll tell you all about them. Oh, by the way, Professor, do you have credentials? Do you have authority to convince me? Hawk stared in disbelief. This fella for real or the palace eunuchs playing another one of their jokes on me? Of course I do, gullible. I have both a PhD and a DHP. A DHP? Yeah. Oh, uh, what's a DHP? A DHP is a doghouse parrot. Only people who are able to recite verbatim what previous doghouse parrots taught them by rote get the darn diploma. Hopefully, after you leave here, our great Lilliputian Gamebridge University will confer upon you a DHP. The DHP gives you authority to repeat everything you memorize like a parrot. Oh yes, Dr. Hawk, I do hope so. I'll do my best to memorize every word you say. Well, you see, Gullible, the atom consists of a tiny bead that orbits a bigger ball. We know this because we are small, smart people and can see what the big gullibles like you can't. We call the orbiting bead the electron. The electron is an elementary particle, meaning that it's so small that it actually has no structure. As you can see for yourself, it's not made of anything smaller. The electron has no length, width, or height, no volume or radius, no size or shape. It's just a tiny mass that has charge and energy. You know, like a vibrating field, whatever that is. The electron is so small, so tiny, that it looks like the letter E. Except that it always carries a minus sign with it. That's how gullibles like you will recognize it. Amazing, Professor. Do you have a picture of the electron that I can take back to my villagers? Of course. What did you think? In fact, I'll do you one better. Here's a movie of the zero-dimensional electron in motion that you can show to all your um, uh, gullible friends. Some of our top doghouse parrots at the Lilliput University filmed it with their um, zero-dimensional camera, you know, on invisible film, of course. And you can also take with you a pretty little chart with pretty little pictures of all the other pretty little particles that our doghouse parrots at the Lilliput University have interviewed and filmed and photographed. There's a muon that looks like an M and a gluon that looks like a G. The up quark has the shape of a U and of course the one facing down looks like a D. But above all, drumbeat. The all-important Higgs. The particle of kilogram. 
which coincidentally adopted form of the Harvard H. I'm eternally grateful for all this state-of-the-art information, Dr. Stevie Hawk, and I intend to share it with all the people in my village. Well, hopefully they are like you, gullible, and believe all this Lilliputian uh, quantum stuff. Oh, I believe they will, Dr. Hawk, but unfortunately, they are not nearly as smart as me. You mean you're the top of the line? My God, what's the world coming to? Well, Gullible, here's your DHP, your Doghouse Parrot Diploma. And you can also take the movie of the Electron and the Standard Model. And you can shove it up your Gullible friend's arm uh, nose holes, you know, so they become smarter through osmosis. Info flowing to a region where the dense live. See you around someday, Gullible. Don't let the door hit you in your butt. so off went gullible gleefully out of the quantum land of Lilliput with his potions and photos and videos and DHP convinced that he had learned a lot from the scientific master of that magic realm. So gullible as he certainly was hiked to another land, the land of the big a land of warped time and alternative realities known as Brobdingnag. There he hoped to learn what the giant minds of that world had discovered about the origin of our universe and the invisible stuff that filled its landscape. Gullivar arrived at the enormous gates of Brobdingnag Castle and the sentinel saw him coming. Fee-fi-fo-fum, I smelled the blood of a candid man. What's your name, Squirt? I'm gullible. Yeah, you looked apart, too. Thank you. What's your business, Squark? I came to learn about the universe from the great sage of Brobdugnang. Oh, brother. You didn't by any chance happen to come across a no-good snake oil peddler that sold us all them fake intelligence pills, did you? Oh, yes. That honest man sold me all these pills at a bargain price and told me about all the knowledge that Brobdingnang Relativity University accumulated over the years. I see. Well, what the hell. Go on in, gullible. You can only hurt yourself. It's on your watch. It's your warp time. Don't dilate mine. So gullible was directed towards the wisest man of the University of Relativity, a professor known by all as Al Aini. What's your name, Quark? I'm gullible, sirs. You certainly don't have to convince me. Why do I always get all these bosons? I suppose it was the loudmouth used car salesman that sold us all those intelligence pills that sent you here. Oh yes, and if you need more of them, I have my knapsack full of bottles. I don't doubt that one bit. So what do you want to know, Gullible? Dr. Alini, I would like to know what there is in the night sky and how it all works. They told me that since you people are so big, you are so closer to the sky and can see up close. Uh, but before you do, Dr. Alini, could you please tell me for my peace of mind whether you have any credentials? Credentials? Oh, no one has more credentials than me. I was knighted three times by Her Excellency, Queen Hossum Feathers of Relativity. I have a CBE and an OBE, and even an Order of the Garter. Um, that was for picking up the Queen's undergarments one night. Oh, Sir Aini, I tip off my hat and curtsy before you. I wish I could have half as many medals. I see now that your name is quite appropriate for you. So let me educate you, uh, gullible, if that's at all possible. As you see, the night sky is filled with these zero-dimensional singularities we call black holes and one-dimensional wormholes that connect us to other universes. There are also mysterious invisible dark matter particles vibrating in the background and for the space-times. It's all very 
obscure and unimaginable. But as you well said, here in Brobdingnang, we can see them because we have big eyesight and long telescopes. So you've seen these zero-D invisible structures, Professor? See them? Well, we filmed and took pictures of them. Here's a picture of a black hole our doghouse parrots took recently. You have doghouse parrot degrees here, too? Of course we do. And here we have one of our top GHBs sliding down a wormhole. Shiny, you made my day. I never expected to learn so much in just a matter of seconds. My time was definitely dilated today, and I believe I got my shot of science for the entire year. I promise I will convey all this information to the villagers back home. May I inquire whether they are more or less like you? Like me? Not quite, Sir Aini. You see, they aren't nearly as smart as me. To make matters worse, they haven't tried the intelligence potion I bought from that nice man at the, on the road to Lilliput. I see. Well, here's an OBE and a CBE and your special doghouse parrot for you. You have those too? Of course. We have internationally recognized institutions over here. We can't give you an order of the garter because you haven't done anything for the ladies. I hope you understand. Oh, thank you, Professor Aini. Come again some other time, hopefully when I'm not around. When you return, someone will be able to tell you about alternative realities and parallel universe, multiverses, the expansion of dark energy and how we drag time around the spinning earth. Good stuff that gullibles like you have no trouble swallowing like candies. And off went gullible to his hometown to spread his newfound knowledge. The street vendor was there, making a killing selling his... Kool-Aid to the townsfolk. The irony is that all of them started making fun of Gullible after he showed them his doghouse parrot degree. The moral of this story, this corny traveler story, is that if you are like, you know, like Gullible, it is the teacher or the instructor, the professor, you know, the preacher, the used car salesman, the snake oil peddler, who will place his mind into your brain. You'll end up like, you know, like gullible, parroting at the doghouse. Genuine understanding comes from reasoning, and that you can only do yourself. So, don't be gullible. So there you have it, folks. Only one change, and that's that as a result that um, there are so many people out there that are like the villagers. It's not only good old gullible. Uh, I decided to change the name of the story, okay? And instead of calling it Gullible's Travel, Travels, I mean, uh, I changed that and called it Gullible's Travel.